Tracy from Salem. I'm coming to you with a couple of projects this week that I'm working on. Um, for the first is um, the K3N stitch along for the week, uh, which is um, a friendship star, which is, I guess, a, a classic quilt pattern. I'm not a quilter myself, as you all know. If you've watched any previous videos, I'm an, an embroiderer. So I'm learning a lot about sewing through K3N's um, weekly stitch along, which is wunderbar, I think. Um, so I'm gonna work on that piece. And then I have another uh, piece that I've been working on, or that just started on really, um, that I'm excited about kind of continuing my exploration of sacred geometry. Um, so, but let me start with the K3N stitch, a uh, 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 friendship, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say, a friendship star. Um, so let's see, I'll clear off the desk here. Of, and um, I am using this fantastic, um, Oh, I guess I put it away probably. This fantastic print, uh, printed fabric designed by um, uh, an artist from Australia. Um, so I'm not sure, I, I wanna just like be transparent about this. I'm not sure if the folks that, that we all call Aboriginal, meaning indigenous to Australia, if they call themselves Aboriginal. I don't actually know that, and I kind of want to look that up now that I've said that out loud, um, because I would like to call them what they would like to be called, um, aside from, you know, people and artists. <laughs> um, but uh, the folks that we, uh, we meaning <laughs> me as a white lady from America, uh, call... Um, Aboriginal. Um, that is the designer. That's the point of this. The designer of this fabric. And I just, I mean, look at that. It's just so amazing. It's right in the sunlight, so maybe you're not seeing the colors as well. Is that better or worse? I don't know. Really, really beautiful fabrics. And I have a lot of them because I just am floored by the design. I find them deeply spiritual and cosmic and um, all of those things. So yeah, so that's the fabric I'm using. Now I will say that what is tricky about this fabric is you can, so you see it has this design on it. Um, <clears throat> and then it, it didn't occur to me sort of before I before I plotted the whole thing out, that I would actually have to think about the fact that once you cut this up into little squares and you make these triangle squares, that the, things aren't gonna line up in the ways that they did on the large piece of fabric. Um, and so I would have to actually think about how to lay this out. Um, I did actually take a picture of how I had it laid out, but you know where that is? on the phone. <laughs> I think it, I think it was this way. I think is how I did it. Um, so that each one of these has kind of one of these jutting out flowers or stars or, uh, just groovy designs. Maybe there's like amoebas. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, constant delight in this fabric. So, so that's the basic layout. And um, so I did what Catherine said, which is suggested, which is to Google how to make a triangle square so that you could see like, if you want this size square, cut them to be, you know, X size. Uh, and so I did that and I chose the size, I wanted them to be an inch and a half and so it said, I think it was like two and three eighths, I think is what they said you should cut, cut the original squares out to be. And like, so that didn't, it didn't work out at all. These triangle squares are two by two. 
not one and a half. So go figure. Apparently the internet does not know everything, much to our um, surprise. So anyway, so that's the basic layout. I, I, so I did these, these ones already, and then I'm, I haven't sewn this one. So this is my two fabrics. So originally, the fabric that I had wanted to use was this white fabric, which I got from a, um, a, just a shirt that I bought at the thrift store. Um, and that was my original intention was to pick up the, the white in there. But once I cut it out, I saw it like this is just too, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but it's just way too, as yeah, you can see it's, it's way too see-through. And um, it's not the same weight as this fabric, uh, which doesn't always matter, but I think that it matters in this case. Um, I mean, again, not a quilter, but I think, I think this is just too thin in the end. And so I, so then I went and I found this blue. Luckily I had a blue that I think, you know, picks up the blue, um, in these, in these dots here. That's what I'm telling myself right now. So anyway, so I've got my two squares and, um, as Catherine taught us, I have made my line right across the center. And then I have used my ruler to make two lines a quarter, is it a quarter? Yeah, a quarter inch on either side, which is what I will actually sew. Um, I am, um, I, I do like irons maybe a little bit more than Catherine. <laughs> and I do like measuring. And, um, and I think that's just because, uh, you know, because I don't have a lot of experience with quilting um, or just sewing in general. I just don't have a lot of experience. And so I'm still at the stage where I want to um, measure everything. Also, I think I mentioned in my last video, so I'm using a back stitch across here, which I also I know is not, not what um, Catherine does. I think she just uses a running stitch, uh, but I'm using a, a back stitch. Um, not a perfect back stitch, but a back stitch. Um, yeah, so I'm definitely still, I think I mentioned in my last video, I think that I don't have a great sense of um, s like space, measuring, numbers. That's just not, not my bailiwick and not one of my, not one of my talents, right? We all have the things that we're good at and, the, and then the other things that we're not so good at and that's why we need each other right um so space measuring numbers not really so I'm very care so I'm much more careful about it maybe than somebody who has a good uh sense of it so I do like I do get out my little ruler and measure um my quarter inch uh I'm not, I'm also, you know, I don't sew straight very well because I haven't, just because I don't have a lot of experience, that's all. Um, so that doesn't trouble me at all. I don't mind doing all the things. Um, I kind of look at it as, uh, you know, there's a lot of areas in life where you have to kind of fly by the seat of your pants because life just moves so freaking fast. Um, and there's something about, and so I know you know, for some people, the measuring and the everything and the ironing, whatever, it kind of just kind of slows them down or it's just troublesome. But for me, it actually is a little bit part of the meditative process of sewing for me. Um, it kind of, uh, you know, I work at a university with, you know, with students where stuff happens all the time. And a lot of it is just like flying by the seat of your pants, doing things super fast. You know, faculty change their mind about what they want 32 times. And you got to, you know, do, <laughs> do all the things. And so like, this is my way of just saying, stop, slow down, take care. Um, and so I don't mind it. Um, 
And then, and also like, it can be very disheartening if you put a lot of effort into a project, but because you're not naturally great at sewing straight or, uh, oh, geez, this thing with the friggin' knots. I hate this. See, this is where I go ballistic, these stupid knots. Um, nope, still. Why? So now I've forgotten what I was saying, but it's something about the fast pace of life and the ways in which you can choose to slow it down. <laughs> that wrapped up that conversation quickly, didn't it? <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, and so a quarter inch on one side of the middle line and then a quarter inch on the other side of the middle line is uh, how this works if you haven't seen the K3N um, video. But I highly, highly recommend, let me just say, if you are not doing the K3N cloth tails um, stitch along, and that's the letter K, the number three, the letter N, cloth tails. K3N, I, th I it, what it looks like to me is a kind of a visual way to write Catherine, which is her name. Um, if you are not doing this stitch along, can I just really highly recommend that you go check it out? So first of all, Catherine herself is just delightful. She, she's, um, British. She lives in England. No, sorry. I'm sorry. She actually, she lives in France, but she is originally from England. Uh, I think she said Yorkshire. Um, and she's just, she's just delightful. And she is so freaking creative. And she is so generous with her knowledge. Um, this doesn't feel like a regular stitch along. This just, just because she's giving us, I mean, this friendship star. But then you know, the, re the reason that she's doing a friendship star is because she has, she, she has been so surprised at how many friends she has made online through her Facebook group and YouTube and Instagram and everything. Um, she's made so many, she's so, so surprised by how many friends she's made just doing this, this stitch along thing, right? That, and this is like very typically her, uh, so she has like a lovely heart. She's a very good teacher. She comes up with really creative projects. Um, last week we did, I, I haven't shown it. Um, I didn't, sh I mean, I, in my, I think in my, my last video, I showed my me making the book bundle, which we are now going to, which we buried at um, the Equinox and which we will all dig up together at the um, solstice. I mean, I love that. Wonderful. Um, so creative, so thoughtful. Um, so if you are not watching her videos, please may I say, uh, go, maybe wait till you finish watching this video, <laughs> but then go to her channel, which is K3N Cloth Tales. It's her YouTube channel. And watch her videos. Really delightful. Now, her aesthetic and my aesthetic, as I've mentioned before, are not the same. Um, I'm still going to need these pens. Uh, she appreciates a more vintage look, a more um, plant dyed, you know, she likes plant dyed and um, tea dyed and that kind of vintagey look, um, which is not so much me, but she makes space for all, for all the aesthetics. Okay. So now what you do is you cut on that middle line straight across from one corner to another. And there you have the triangle square. 
Um, so for now, I'm just using this uh, little presser, but I will use the iron later. Um, so you can just press it open and then just cut off those little corners. Ugh, all the little, all the little strings everywhere. So now if I had more practice with this kind of sewing, I'm, I might have figured out how to kind of use this pattern more effectively um, or more let me just say, I, not effectively, more purposefully, um, perhaps, but I'm not troubled by it. Yeah, everyone's got to start somewhere. Um, so now here's my two squares. And so then the way you put this bad boy together is you have your, this square in the middle, and then you put the, um, the like color next to it and then you have your your wonky star it's not wonky it's just a friendship star um i am trying not to make mine too wonky i am trying to actually um but you know make it as uniform as i can just because I'm so new at this and I want that practice. Okay, so now let's see. Um, now I have to sew them together. So I've already sewn this row together and I did so, I sewed these two together. These are the first ones I sewed together because I just wanted to make sure it actually looked good. <laughs> um, and so now I'll take this one and put it face down here. Now I am even, um, because I'm so new at this and just really wanting to try my hand at, at getting it just right. Um, just right, whatever that means. Uh, just trying, trying my hand at, at sort of doing it sort of the traditional way. So I can just learn that. So I mat line those two squares up as well as I can. And then I'm gonna pin this guy. Oof, these applique pins are both handy and really annoying <laughs> to use because they're so little. Um, and I do not have any nails to pick them up with. So let's see, I feel like this is just a little bit off of where I want it to be. Um, and it's a little bit hard to do this because the camera's like right in front. Okay, so now I am gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure just like an eighth of an inch. This is one of those friction pens, which will, I mean, so these lines are gonna be on the inside anyway, but the friction pen, when I put the iron on it, it'll lift right off. Um, and then I'm gonna, again, I'm doing a back stitch. Uh, you can do a running stitch. I suppose you, you also um, could do a whip stitch. Oh my gosh, I saw on Instagram um, oh, and I can't look it up because the phone is here. <laughs> what is her name? I just, I, I want to give her a shout out because she consistently, I think it's she, um, I'm getting my iPad out so that I can, uh, look up, look it up on Instagram. 
because she consistently creates just the most gorgeous pieces. Um, can I, do I know how to spell her handle here? Um, I think she, I, I think she might be French, Murmurace. Look at this. I don't know if you could, this is, I don't even know if this is legal for me to be doing, right? <laughs> and you can see like all the fingerprints on my screen. That's disgusting. She, I think she, what she did was a, a buttonhole stitch to put her pieces together. It's M-U-R-M-U-R-E-S with some lines and dots. So, so cool. She consistently creates just the most gorgeous pieces. So that is to say you could whip stitch this or like she did, she actually did I think it's a buttonhole stitch. Um, but it could be something else, actually. It's it's a little bit hard to tell from the picture. Um, which is to say there's a number of ways you can join pieces together, depending on your mood. Um, so, yeah, you might notice in this video I am not wearing a brace. And I am not wearing any athletic tape because last Friday I finally was able to get my um, cortisone shot. Um, I was supposed to get it a, a little bit ago, but then I ha then I retriggered a back injury and I had to um, cancel because usually when I get it, I basically can't use my hand for like at least a day, sometimes more. La last time when I got the shot in last August. I couldn't use my hand for like almost a week, like five solid days. It was so painful. <laughs> um, this time, uh, it really just was like mildly uncomfortable for like a day, which was just fantastic. Um, and I think, um, and, and, and so it is helping a lot, although it's not helping as much as last time, unfortunately. They don't, it's, a, it's kind of a different experience every time you get one of these things. Okay, so let me say, this is, now this is straight up from Catherine. I thought, and what I have always done was press these seams open and then sew over them so that you're sewing the seam open. I thought that's what you were supposed to do. But, no, <laughs> you, you go, so I'm, so I've sewn right up to the fold. Um, and you can see here's my seam from when I sewed across. Now I'm going to go actually through this guy and come out the other side of that seam and then take one or two more stitches just to tack this down. And these are not perfectly lined up. Just fiddle a little bit there. Still not perfectly lined up. And then I'll just take like one or two more here to tack this down. So this is like a revelation to me um, that you don't sew the seams open and down. And Catherine said a whole bunch of things about nesting seams. And I'm going to have to go back and watch that because I did not, I did not fully comprehend what she was saying or how she was doing it. But I guess there's something about nesting these seams and that's why you sew it in that way. So always something new to learn, right? Um, I think I was going on about my cortisone shot. Uh, it definitely feels much better than it did a couple weeks ago. Feet falling asleep. Um, but I, but it's, I, I can tell that it's not working as well as it did last time. And my guess is that that means also that it will not work as long as it did last time. 
I did get, um, but, but believe me, I'm very happy. Did I do this right? Oh, I suddenly have this bad feeling that I did not do this right. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. Is that right? Mm hmm. That doesn't seem right. I need a picture of what it's supposed to look like to know if I did it wrong or right. Shoot, I gotta get out the I gotta get out the iPad again. <laughs> Cause I suddenly have this bad feeling that I did not do this right. Okay, I did. I did. Whew. <coughs> so I did get an x-ray while I was there because it has been a year since I started getting these shots. I got one shot last spring and then one shot in August. Uh, and so it was time for an x-ray again. Okay, so now what I'm doing is now I'm gonna put this piece here and this piece here, and then I'll put the rows together. Um, so I did get the, I did get the x-ray and the doctor was like, yeah, you have very bad arthritis. And um, at some point, I will need the surgery, which I understand is very um, good, very effective surgery. So, I, I mean, there was a part of me that was just like, well, let's just go right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, although obviously I wouldn't be able to use my hand for quite a long time afterwards. And you got to prepare for something like that, right? Shoot, I already forgot which side I'm sewing up here. Pay attention, Tracy. Just pay attention. Okay, so this goes like this. And this goes that way and this goes this way so here this is the it's astonishing how easily I can get sidetracked um yeah so at some point because what they do is they take you know it's one of these bones in here a very small bone but it's just basically disintegrating from arthritis and they just take it out um, and then they take a tendon from somewhere else in your arm and they use it to they kind of build up a cushion um, <clears throat> and then and then you're ready to rumble I guess um, but obviously you're not going to use your hand for quite a while uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably six six weeks maybe you might be in a brace or a cast or something like that um i'm going to assume oh i didn't uh, draw my line <clears throat> let's do that so that we don't mess up the whole square by going because launch wise Oh, Catherine asked me, how do you spell Kaslanchwise? And I got to tell you what, I have no siyasi me. I need to be way, way down here with my thread. Um, Catherine asked me, how do you spell Kaslanchwise? I have no idea. It's not, I, I don't even know if it's like a word that's used out in the world or if it was just a word that my mom made up and that we just used in our home. But it's, as I mentioned in some previous video, it it means essentially the same as cattywampus, like cause wise, but, you know, uh, at an angle, messed up, not the right way. I don't know. <laughs> Wonky is the the word, I guess, uh, quite popular in this community. Um, so you have to plan for that, right? 
if you're going to be in a brace for six weeks and you can't use your hand for six weeks and maybe you got to, I don't know, bunk with a friend or uh, maybe I'd stay with my parents or something like, you know, to because I wouldn't be able to use my hand for six weeks. Um, and also, I have to say, like, the idea of not being able to stitch for six weeks is really upsetting. And I know that I would make a practice of keeping my eye on the larger goal, which is that after everything healed, right? Because six weeks in a brace, and then I'm assuming X amount of time, X amount of weeks of physical therapy. But then I would be able to stitch without any pain is the, you know, the point. So I'll have to think, but it's also like, yeah, yeah, then you have to plan, like, maybe that's going to be your vacation that year, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's got to be, I got to plan it out. And um, it can't be during certain times of the year because it's just so, like, I can never, I basically can never take vacation from, like, mid-August to mid-December and mid-January to, um, well, essentially until after graduation, which is early May. Because the semester is just so busy. Um, so I had to plan my vacations around that time, those times. Something, if you talk about cassage wise, something feels a little bit off here. Let's see. So maybe that nesting conversation was about what is supposed to happen here because that is a big, so maybe this needs to go the other way is probably the answer. All right, it's happening. It's happening, people. One more. And also, like, maybe now I'll just stop talking about my thumb. Because <laughs> that's, like, a very long conversation about my thumb. And just arthritis, more generally speaking. Um, but, you know, they did tell me, every doctor I've seen about this, has told me that this is the most common place. I've got it in both hands. Just this one is much less because it's my left hand and I don't use it as much. But this is like the most common arthritis of all the arthritises. <clears throat> and maybe many of you also have this issue. Maybe many of you also get cortisone shots or acupuncture or um, PT or, I mean, a variety of ways you can deal with it. So I will also say, let me say this, I, I also started taking glucosamine because I started having some knee issues as well. And I heard that glucosamine is really helpful for uh kind of lubricating joints and it's it's a um it's a natural thing it's like natural it's like a, a, a it's like it's not a vitamin but it's like a what a mineral or something so it's safe to take although you know always check with your doctor <laughs> uh, I am not a doctor um but I had heard that it really was quite helpful so I started taking that about a month ago um and it took me almost a month to get a PT appointment for my knee, um, in part, because I, mean, I had one, but I had to cancel it because my back went out. I mean, good God, you'd think I was like in my 80s. I sound so decrepit, but just all the things happened at one time. That's all. <laughs> um, so, it uh, so I had to 
cancel it. So it took me like, uh, let's see, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the line on this side so I can stitch on this side. So it took me about four weeks before, between the time the orthopedist said do PT on your knee and the time I actually got to the PT guy. And in that time of a month of taking um, glucosamine, the knee pain has almost entirely vanished. Um, and I feel certain that it probably is helping here as well um, because I did notice the pain go down here as well. Um, it's just that this is already so advanced um, that it's it still needs more help than just glucosamine. But, so let me say that, if you yourself have started to have thumb issues or any kind of arthritis issues, you know, check out the glucosamine. Uh, talk to your doctor. It may be helpful. Um, it may not. It may not help everybody. And also, like, the minute you stop taking it, then you know, the issues are going to come back because it's just basically kind of hel helping your body create the things, the, the, the lubrication that you need. Um, I don't know exactly how it works. So, uh, do your own research. Uh, but I will just say that glucosamine has been very, very helpful to me and the PT guy. So yesterday I went to the PT guy and he's like, uh, you don't need PT. He like, he did all the tests. He did all the little, uh, you know, looked at the knee all kinds of ways, made me do all these exercises, bent it this way and that, blah, blah, blah. It didn't hurt really the entire time. And, um, and he's just like, so, it, you know, these days it sort of occasionally feels a little bit uncomfortable maybe like when I first wake up but then within five minutes it's fine and I can go up and down the stairs all the things that were paining me before do not pain me anymore and he's like forget it you don't even need PT because the glucosamine is working for you uh so yeah snaps to glucosamine all right now I'm going to just like stop talking about my body woes because god what a yawn um, and I am pretty much finished with this thing. So this afternoon I am taking my book bundle to my mother's house because I live in the city. I don't really have anywhere. There's a park nearby, but I don't really want to put it in the park. So my mom said I could bury it in her garden. Isn't that sweet of her? Because she is a sweetie. And so this afternoon, I'm going to take my, I'm going to go visit them for Easter and um, I will take my bundle with me and pop it in the garden. She's got this awesome massive stone pig. It's very hard to explain, <laughs> but it's just, just this ginormous, ginormous stone pig, which we ha all call Fern after um, Charlotte's Web. I know his name was Wilbur, but she, this pig is definitely a girl, so we named it Fern. And uh, so I'm gonna go bury my bundle under Fern this afternoon. So this looks a little bit weird to me, even though I so carefully measured everything, it doesn't quite look right to me. Something about this just doesn't look right. What is it? So instead of putting these three together, I'm gonna go and watch Catherine's video again, because something just doesn't feel right about this. And I don't know what it is. So, all right, so I'm going to put that aside for now. Um, and my other project. So last time I showed um, this piece, uh, I was working on, I showed a stitch for the outline of this piece. So lately I've been very interested by sacred geometry and I'm not going to talk about it right now because I'm still reading about it. I'm still learning. I, I know nothing. 
but I'm just very intrigued by it. Um, and so I've just been doing some drawings and then I thought, well, can't I do it out of cloth? And originally I had wanted to try to use um, reverse applique. So here, this was my first attempt. And the idea was to use reverse applique here to, but unfortunately I shouldn't have cut this side. This, this fabric was coming down here and I should have left that side to create the effect I was, that I had in my head. But I just started cutting and I got, you know, I got all into it. And so it didn't work out, which is, but that's fine, right? That's how it works, right? You, you, you just try things and then you're like, oh, that's, that's not what I meant to do. So if this, if I hadn't cut here, I think this would look better. But also the thing about sacred geometry is that it's really precise, which is, you know, after all I just said about the fact that I'm not very good with space and, and uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of funny to me that <laughs> that's, I'm intrigued by sacred geometry, which is very, very precise. The patterns that get created are really based on precision, right? You, I've got my compass. It's very precise. The, the, and so this, these interior shapes get created by these very precise circles and creating them in certain ways. Uh, and then, and, and it's all based on, you know, like this central line and then this circle gets created in very certain ways. It's, it's hard to explain. But it's very hard to do that kind of precision work in fabric, right? So fabric moves. Uh, the minute you're not using a cut, like even if you use a compass on the fabric, um, you still have to cut very precisely, which is, you know, which is hard. It's, it is, so I learned a lot doing this. You know, you can, so you can see the central circle, which is supposed to be, exactly centered and touching the edges you know it's not it's not <laughs> well, it's better if I zoom in than pick up so and and this shape cutting out this shape that did not that did not work so that's okay so then so then this one turned out much better right uh the 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 center shape it turned out much better. The circle here turned out much better. Um, so, but what I didn't do is I didn't use um, reverse applique, which is what I, that is the original thought I had when I started thinking about um, sacred geometry was like, oh, I wonder how reverse applique could play here. So anyway, this is a great improvement, right? Um, so now I am looking at a larger piece. Uh, let's zoom back out. And this is, here's the drawing for the larger piece. Um, so it's the same circle and they call this the eye. I think it has a different name, eye of something maybe, I'm not sure. But this is the eye that you can create. And then it's adding on this bigger circle which touches the top and the bottom of the smaller circles. Um, so, so you can add it, so there's more potential for more different kinds of fabrics. And for some, somehow, some way, Catherine, and so this is again, going back to Catherine, uh, K3N Cloth Tales. Um, she had a series on log cabins and I thought, oh, could you do like some, some version of log cabin in the quarters of this circle? Um, so sure. Sorry. Drinking tea. Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, sure. Why not? I, 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 I know I've said many times, I always try to go for the most complicated version of something the first time I do it, right? So, um, let's see, where did I put? Oh yeah, here. Okay. So, uh, 
Let's get rid of all this stuff. So the first thing I have to brag about is this gorgeous, gorgeous frame that my parents got me for Christmas for, um, for embroidery. This is called the Millennium Frame. Isn't that fantastic? I might start calling it the Millennium Falcon. Um, and uh, these sides here, you tighten them. Once you put the fabric onto the frame, by tightening these sides, it makes it tight as a drum, even almost out to the edges. Um, I think I would still, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm uh, embroidering way out here, I probably still would use some stretchers, uh, but otherwise tight as a drum. Isn't that fantastic? So um, I haven't yet got the um, stand. I did order a stand because it's, you can't, you can't hold this thing, right? Um, I'm gonna have to prop it on the table like this to sew. Uh, but there's a stand coming. So anyway, I don't know if you can see, but I have sketched very lightly the large circle, the interior circles, and the eye um, here. So uh, what I what I was thinking about is, so this, obviously, this is the, now I am going to try some reverse applique on this in that what I want to do, so these are my circles. This one isn't sewn yet. But these are the circles. And, um, then what I'm going to try to do is cut out this, uh, you know, reverse applique. So cut the circles to show this thing so that this is yellow. Um, and then this, so then I did the um, log cabin idea, and that's going to be the interior. So this will be yellow. And this will be the blue. Um, and I'll, I'm going to put something along the center here because it's just these. Uh, oh, zoom in, Tracy, but it's better. Um, to cover the edges here. But this is a this is what I was working on during the during the week. During the week, I come home, and I basically have about two hours to make and eat dinner and relax before I had to go to bed because I get up at like 4.30 to commute. Um, so I don't get much done during the week, but I love the way this came out and I will give Catherine all the credit for this. Um, yeah, so I'm, I, I haven't figured out really <laughs> yet how, yeah, how exactly I'm going to do the reverse applique. So the idea is to cut so that the yellow is showing for this part. And then the yellow is showing here as part of the larger circle. And then these, these guys are the, oops. Yeah, let's zoom back out again. Sorry. That's the idea. We'll see how that goes. Um, so which, part of what I had to do was make a bunch of templates, right? I had to make templates for the circles because, um, so you can, so I could have just cut this circle and then, and then hemmed it, but, or, you know, whatever you call, is it called hemming? I don't know what it's called, but that can be very fiddly and not very precise. So this is a technique I learned actually from Sue Spargo when I went to her retreat last year, uh, last summer. Was it last summer or two summers ago? Gosh, I'm losing track. I think it was two summers ago actually. Um, but anyway, this is a technique I learned from her about how to make perfect circles. Um, 
yeah, so am I zoomed out? Let me zoom out a little bit. Oh, you can see my large stack of books over there. There's large stacks of books everywhere in my house. Um, there's my book on sacred geometry. Uh, obviously not like I'm not reading some Greek Euclidean geometry tome or something. I'm reading something fun. <laughs> um, that's where I'm starting anyway. And if I get into it, then I will read more scholarly works about geometry. But for right now, I'm just reading something fun about it. Um, so I have my template for this circle. And I get a pretty long, this is actually possibly not long enough. Um, and so I'm going to, so I'm going to put the knot on this side, not on this side, because at the end, I want to be able to pull it. So I'm going to put the knot here, I'm doing this around the camera. Um, so I might not be very... Um, and I'm just going to go, I'm just basically doing a running stitch. Um, and so the first thing I did actually was I ironed. You don't have to do that. You can just fold it as you go around. That's fine. But I find it a little bit easier if I first iron and then these little pleats are created as I'm ironing. And then I can kind of just very easily sew through this pleat to catch it. Uh, and now should I, should I zoom in a little more? But basically, I'm just doing a running stitch around. I actually don't need this in here at this moment. I'm just doing a running stitch around this little um, hem that I folded over and um, ironed. And very loose, very big, that's all fine. It's uh, in no way do you have to be, it's probably easier for you to see actually if I leave this in because otherwise it's a little bit dark fabric. Um, that's probably easier for you to see. Um, so yeah, I'm just doing this running stitch and trying to catch, catch pleats when I can. I'm not pulling tight. I'm just just bringing the thread through, but I'm not pulling it tight. I'm not making anything perfect right now. I'm not making anything. I'm like, I'm not worrying about, uh, the paper's kind of sliding around a little bit. Doesn't matter. It's just in there to help you see a little better, but it's not in there because I need it to be in there to, to do this sewing. Catching the pleats when I can, not worrying about it if I can't. Um, but that does make it a little bit easier later if I catch the pleats. And it's, it's not as awkward as it looks. It's just awkward because I have this camera in front of me. <laughs> um, so. so I think, uh, let's see, what I'm gonna do maybe is I'm gonna, um, just move this at this exact moment. I'm going to move this because uh, the frame is also a little bit getting in my way. And I don't want the little threads to get all over the um, place. That is that is easier not to have that frame in my way. Well, you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to over my iron, just get that warmed up. Excuse me one sec. Get that going. Get myself um, a little ironing pad. Okay. Um, so, see, I think I did not make this thread long enough. Tracy! Arr. 
Org. Where's the beginning? I don't think I'm gonna make it. Sugar. Sugar, that's what my mom says. It's a very old fashioned way to cuss. <laughs> um, maybe I'll make it. Yeah, that's what my mother would say. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Uh, just being a bit fiddly there. Oh, phew. I'm going to make it. Huzzah. So now I've come back around to the beginning. Here's the beginning thread. Can you, you see that? I can't see if you can see it because the gripper thing is right across the camera. And basically I'm going to go, if, if, it's, if it's here, I'm going to go a little bit past it. So I'm just going to take a couple more stitches and go past where I started. Okay. So now I have the th end of the thread and the beginning of the thread. I'm gonna start by tugging. Let me move this up here. So now I am gonna get my paper template in place. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Get my pet paper template in place right where I ironed it. Then I'm going to take the beginning thread and tug. Do you see the sides zipping up? And now I'm going to take the ending thread and tug. Can you see the sides zipping up? So I don't want to pull it so tight that the paper is starting to come up like that, right? I want it to be flat, but I do want it to be snug. I want it to be snug so that these edges are crisp. So I'm just going to alternate tugging on both, just very gently and keeping the paper flat and just tugging a little bit, a little bit, and then I'm going to tie a knot once I have got it very tight, but without buckling. And I'm just gonna take that first string over string and again, pull it snug, but make sure it's flat, that the full circle is there. And then take that second string over string. I am very uncoordinated about tying knots. Okay. And there you have your perfect circle. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iron the bejee out of it. Right, so I'm gonna go back and, and iron all these um, ruffles flat. I'm gonna flip it. Give it a really good press. Look at that perfect circle. I'm gonna slip the paper out. Put my folds back into place and press it again. This is too much ironing for Catherine, but a delightful amount of ironing for Tracy, who is a type A first child. And I mean, look at that circle. Perfect, perfect. As perfect a circle as you can get in fabric. All right, now let's turn off the Dangerous Hot Instruments. Unplug 
Okay, so now I have my two circles. And that is exactly how I made the other circle. This one, you can see, um, I made it the exact same way and then I stitched on top of it. So, now I'm going to applique these down. And, but the, th but probably before I do that, I should probably figure out how I'm going to do the reverse applique. I, oh, so I think what I'm going to do is, um, let me put this in within reach. So I did also create a template for the, um, for the center. I don't know why I have it. I have two different ones, but they're the same, the same template, which I um, made from my drawing in this, in the book. Um, so I think what I do is I, um, oh my gosh, there's, this table is a little bit small for YouTube. All right, so I'm going to put the circles, I applique the circles down. And then this goes right at the junction because the junction is the thing that's creating the center shape where the two circles meet. So something is a little bit off. Um, it's a very precise thing, geometry. And I am not always a very precise person but yeah see how it's it's made by the two circles intersecting so I think what I do this is this is my plan <laughs> I am going to applique down these circles and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to trace this shape and then I Probably what I have to do is I probably have to sew, I have to sew first, maybe a cup, maybe a, a couple of rounds with, you know, as much sort of an invisible, well, no, so, well, so this one will already be sewn because that's part of the applique. So then I have to sew on this side. Um, and I'll probably go around a couple of times with maybe a back stitch, And then cut out the middle and then uh, sew this on and so and then I will want to be lining the um, lining both the outside of this circle the outside of the yellow circle and the shape of the eye and maybe even this um, with a thread like the way that I did this one an outline stitch of some sort um and I've got a couple of threads that I'm thinking about um so this is a very cool um suede I wish you could feel that it's oh it's so soft it's kind of a cool suede uh this is um so some of these threads that I have are sort of very clean and precise and some are more like soft and warm so this is like a I forget what you call it mohair maybe uh, but they're all so these are all like in the color palette here's an Aurora I don't know if I want to I don't know if I want sparkle but I might want sparkle I don't know um, I like this thread a lot. It's very, it's very thin though. It might be too thin. But I could also do it. The other thing I 
was thinking, what I was really thinking actually was a chenille. And this chenille is a variegated chenille that has, that kind of has, the, has the color range, right? So it could be that. That's a kind of light, I feel like. But the other idea I had was maybe a yellow chenille. Just as for contrast, especially around that center. Right? Um, couch that around, maybe. Of course, this will be yellow around it once I do the revert, once I do the cutting. So maybe, maybe not yellow. Maybe it actually wouldn't stand out because it won't stand out against the yellow. Decisions, decisions. Anyway, that is a ways away. <laughs> First, I have to see if I can actually construct this thing and make it happen without just completely ruining it. But I think that's enough for now. All right. I uh, hope you're stitching something that makes you happy. And I hope that you are being good to yourself this week. Take care.